Alright, another draft physics video presentation. Uh, a little breezy in here. Uh, breezy enough. <laughs> to create some waves. Yes, in the medium of our uh, the atmosphere. Uh, so yes, comments to start and then something else, probably. We'll see how it goes. Um, Alright, I guess this is where we start. Uh, if we annotated every bad idea, we might actually unravel the mysteries behind blind stupid. Uh, I, I'm just saying if the record was the evidence rather than interpretations of the evidence or um, you know paraphrases of the evidence, uh, the actual experiments were somehow directly connected um, to assertions made so they could be um, at least understood that this is what the experiment actually did rather than what they're implying it did that might help a lot too so if we could actually sit and look at the evidence as they're describing um, the evidence uh, it might make a difference also thank you for sharing your research with us well I, it's not really research so uh, no, I'm I'm sharing um, a perspective with you um, that's again kind of went back to the beginning and tried to do it with just the evidence. What's the evidence? Well, photons travel from point A to point B in a straight line, uh, you know, and, and you know, all that stuff. It, Maxwell draws, okay, the force coming off of charges. Let's say in dead straight lines, <laughs> you know, uh, radiating, you know, from the source, um, and, uh, you know, there's no waves in the real evidence of what's happening. Waves are an emergent thing. They happen when you start moving stuff around and jiggling it. But it's not something elemental these simple conclusions, right? If people understood that, okay, every time I hear the word wave, I understand, oh, okay, it's not fundamental. Uh, it's not elemental. It's not something the little bits in the universe that are the universe are doing. It's something that happens when a bunch of them are doing it uh, together. Okay. Uh, Mr. Keeper, ha, hold the banjo of truth in the physics world. Uh, yeah, it's mostly ukuleles that he plays, but anyway, so he probably plays a little bit of Joe's too. But yes, um, very good. Uh, so, and Brands again. Love your crayons, Gary. Well, I don't know if they're that lovable. They're kind of just a cheap version of crayon. Uh, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. Well, I don't know. <sighs> Okay, I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, all right. Ha 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 ha! I love this man's draft. Science is great. You know, I hate capital letters and comments. You know, unless they're really necessary. They really should be saved for the important bits. But whatever. Uh, talk. So this is the so so. I don't know who this Cole Panucci guy is. But, um, you know, he's an anonymous coward on the internet, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> clearly, he's defending something, um, but he's just doing it as a troll. I mean, so there's a point where it's time just to block him because he just keeps prefacing his statements with overt mischaracterizations or what has to be called lies. Um, so, anyway, Vilanovsky, through his vast psychological understanding, this doesn't even make any sense right I mean this, this this is we're talking about the mechanics of the universe this is about fucking psychological crap um, of various mythology so again there's nothing to understand psychologically there's they're fucking stories they're fables now you can say some of the fables are probably based on something similar to what happens in life you know, uh, you could argue that uh, all good intentions, uh, you know, good, that the road to hell is paved in good intentions. Well, because, yeah, that happens sometimes. You know, you go to save somebody and you get killed. Um, yeah, it's one of the liabilities of life. It's 
but it's clearly not an accurate statement that all good intentions are punished or any of that kind of crap and so in some ways it's just a rationalization so you could say that's a psychological um, um, defect that we have that we try to defend our position with weak evidence you know and it's kind of weak evidence that uh, you know all good deeds end up getting you fucked <laughs> you know, that doesn't happen but anyway uh, mythologies around the world attempted to explain the common stories well they're really not that common so again this is just more horseshit now obviously all the people in different places in the world probably have common experiences with things like why are there seashells on top of the mountain you know they all find that kind of stuff they all find weird bones in the ground say oh, there's dragons um, you know so they all have common experiences and they without knowledge you know even thunder and lightning are, it's a common event thunder sounds very angry um, <laughs> you know it's and lightning is clearly nasty so I mean I'm just saying you know common stories no they don't have common stories about Venus flying by the earth and zapping it with electricity I mean that's just horseshit to make this huge leap that these preposterous theory that you have of uh, this active dynamic universe doing all these magical dragon things um, you know the st or sun standing still all kinds of nonsense as if these are common stories well they're really not so this is all just horseshit you're trying to rationalize a religion and that's all you're doing and you're pretending you're doing science which just makes you disgusting um, common stories and structures. I mean, it's like some, it's like psychics or something. I mean, there's absolutely no evidence. You put them in a controlled circumstance and they fail. They fail dismally, okay, to demonstrate any ability to do anything ever. They've never done a fucking thing because everything they do is a fucking lie and a cheat. They research people ahead of time, they do all kinds of things. They just cheat dumb people out of their fucking money. And that's what you're just doing here. You're defending people with a fucking agenda. Religious fucking assholes who need the universe to have a god in it. And you're defending their creation science as if it has some kind of credibility when it has zero. And why are you doing that? It's just a horrible, evil thing to do, you piece of lying pus. Why are you being a fucking apologist for broken psychologies, corrupt psychologies who, that are dependent on the truth matching their fables? Anyway, a commonality affirmed by even mainstream comparative mythology. Whatever the fuck that is. Where, where it's confirmed by nothing. You use the word confirmed. No, it's not no, affirmed. It's not affirmed by anything. That's just a lie. <laughs> you know, no credible science says, oh yes, there's some grand mythology here that needs to be explained. No, they have explained it. See, they just keep lying. I just played a video of theirs. Maybe I should, you know, I don't want to get on the subject of evolution on this channel because it's not really the subject. But they're doing a rag on the theory of evolution using the same tired old argument that was completely debunked by Stephen Gould. I mean, he explained why there's not the fossil record doesn't have perfect incremental jumps in it, why there's no missing links. There's no missing links because it's not how evolution takes place. Big giant populations don't evolve because the density of the population will destroy any aberrant. Anything that is unusual will get killed, okay, by the giant gene pool. The giant gene pool snuffs out, okay, any, th any irregularities. It smooths the genetic code. So the only thing that's going to evolve are small populations. And they kind of demonstrated the truth of this theory by pointing out that when genetically tested, all of the North American and all of the American Indians were related to six women. Six. Okay, six women made across the land bridge and had babies in, in uh, the New Americas. Six. Tiny populations do the evolving. Oh, you're just such 
you're just so obnoxious to facts and the truth. You know, but in the modern time, I mean, you know, the guy, Stephen Gould's dead, uh, and I guess he, he's, his phrase, punctuated equilibrium, is just a little too complex for you. But it's spelled out quite clearly and quite logically, okay? And it makes perfect sense why some populations have huge diversity, why some populations have no diversity. It's because of whether they wander, okay? Whether they go west, young man. Oh, you just you know whether they can even walk far. Okay, I mean a lot of popular a lot of ant organisms can't just can't migrate because their little legs are too fucking short and nothing carries them somewhere like turtles or something. Uh, found between cultures that were never in contact. So again, this is just horseshit. To imply that there is some grand evidence of all this commonality is just a fucking lie. All right. I mean, in in the, the only in the vaguest sense, and as I pointed out clearly, there should be some commonality because they're all on planet Earth, and planet Earth has certain structures that are in common no matter where you go. Trees grow up. Uh, you know, certain things happen. The most logical explanation. Oh yes, we need a logical explanation why there's a vague, tiny correlation between silly stories is a series of celestial events occurring in the relatively close past. So just more horseshit. So they're denying evolution because somehow they have to make human civilization much shorter. You know, they can't, they don't really want to talk about ancient man and evolution and all that stuff. Um, they're just doing creation science and they're disguising it as if it's not just fucking religion. Your self-awareness levels must be as low as your self-esteem. So again, there's n nothing wrong with either one, as I demonstrate every fucking day. <laughs> um, and you're the one who's desperate. You're the one doing... You're the one... I, obviously, you're the desperate one because you're resorting to lying constantly. Ay. All right, so Cole Panucci. Hey, you called me a liar. Yes, because that's overtly what you did when it's you who's lying. So again, he makes the accusation, I provide evidence of a lie. Okay, I point out clearly how I never said what you just quoted in your comment. It never came out of my mouth. It's just absolute horseshit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you said what I said you said from 56 to 57 in your previous video. So... I could go to the previous video. I did. I played it. I'm not talking about photons or electrons or waves. So where do you get this fucking quote? I mean, uh, well, it's not on the video anyway, but I, because I deleted the lie. It's, I never said it, so it's just preposterous. But if somebody goes through the trouble, there's no quote there. There's, there's no conversation about waves or any other horse shit in the previous video. It's just a fucking lie. Uh, calling me a liar, fucking hypocrite. No, you have to have evidence before you make an accusation. Now, you clearly, again, lied when you implied that there's some evidence that I have sock accounts and that I have ever thumbed up one of my own videos. You have zero evidence that that ever happened. Now, I have a whole pile of evidence that D. Hilster does it all the time, okay? That he, every video he produced, he spiked up the thumbs up on every single one of them. I have a pile of evidence. You have zero evidence. You can't tell the difference and you're going to call somebody else a hypocrite? I mean, you're a despicable fucking liar. So, yeah, you're done here. I mean, that's I've given you every opportunity to make a, a rational argument. You can't do it. Again, the quote is a pile of shit. You didn't quote me. You lied about what I said. Okay, you think all those other accusations at him by others were out of nowhere? So again, more accusations with no evidence, just horseshit from liars. Liars who have lost the argument. So, Hexameet yeah, lost an argument and now is just going to play a petty game. But you're, yeah, you're done, Cole, really. It's, this is just ridiculous. I'm not going to waste any more time arguing points that are just clear. Clearly the electric universe is arguing straw man. The, they're saying physics says when physics doesn't say that. I'm not even defending in any way whatsoever any of the logic 
of conventional physics. I think it's illogical, silly, and stupid. But you're not even paraphrasing the, those idiots, <laughs> those liars, um, hyperballers, talking about their evidence that they don't have. You're not even paraphrasing them accurately. You can't even argue with those liars honestly, which just makes you so despicable. So, fuck off. Liar. All right. Full metal in capitals. Whatever that means makes perfect sense. Well, your screen name doesn't to me. <laughs> so, so again, you're not much of an authority. I don't feel a grand victory. Oh, I've convinced full metal. Well, then I'm not convincing anybody worth convincing, unfortunately. All right. Grace, forget it. Whatever this crap means. <sighs> never mind the mainstream. Why? <laughs> yeah, why? Why never mind them? Oh, this is a woke con uh, comment. It's so useless. It's even. It seems even the dissident crowd considers you unworthy of mention. I, again, and to whose credit or discredit? They're cowards. Okay, they're cowards. The mainstream's a coward, and the dissidents are cowards. I mean, I have done everything I can to call them out, and they're basically cowards, right? I mean, they're the one afraid of any interaction direct with anybody who actually knows something, and that's clearly what's taking place. I mean, again, I'll pay them to show up, you know? So, to tell me what it takes, uh, 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 Jeff Yee, or or uh, Dissident Science, or um, uh, Bill Gates, especially. How, how much do I have to pay you, Bill, for an hour of your time to interrogate um, the statements you've made about what's possible and what's impossible? Uh, you know, whether there exist any other theories on Earth that are better than yours. Uh, <laughs> you know, come on. I'm the one sitting here saying I'm willing Okay, to be challenged, to be tested, um, to be exposed as a, as, as a charlatan or a fraud. Um, because I've got the goods. I've actually got the evidence on my side. I can talk about real experiments in physics instead of fake ones that never took place. And you're the cowards. Never answer any of my questions, right? I can't interrogate you. You don't answer a single question I've asked. Why don't you tell me again? Well, where in the interferometer does the interference take place? If I send a single photon into the interferometer, what happens to it? Why don't you tell me what happens to a photon? Why don't you just draw a picture of how a single photon goes into the interferometer and what happens to that single photon? Go ahead. What, what's the big deal? Isn't that fundamental to your physics as an understanding of this wave theory? Well, why don't you explain what happens? And why don't you explain in the multi-slit experiment why images are being projected at different locations? Why are they images of what went into the slits? Why? <sighs> Fuck. I mean, you're just despicable fucking cowards. They say the only thing worse than being mocked is being ignored. Well, no, the only thing worse is being a coward like you, a lying coward. A, a disgusting lying coward. I mean, ouch. You're, again, why don't you tell us who your family is so I can make faces at them and mock them as being related to such a piece of scum. Wow, your genetic code must really suck if that piece of crap came out of one of your vaginas. Uh, P.S. 99 cent store sells t-shirts for 99 cents and why should I give a fuck? <laughs> you know, why, why is that relevant to anything? I mean, I'm not wearing a shirt because I'm not wearing a shirt. That's how I choose to live my life, is not wearing a shirt in the summer. That's not allowed. You, you, you the Borg, says, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> you, know, you have to do our convention. We have a convention. I mean, fuck you. I mean, amazing <laughs> shitheads. Oh. All right, so another one by the same asshole. Uh, do you honestly think anyone believes your claim that you thought of push gravity independently by yourself? So you're saying that nobody could have just sat down and said, 
well, gravity's kind of weird, right? I mean, I don't buy this bent space. I think there's got to be a force. Well, where does the force come from? Okay, and so they start thinking about, well, pulling, how would it pull on it? Pulling, pulling, pulling is, how does it do pulling? I mean, you need hands, right? You need to reach out and grab it and pull it. Well, yeah. Sun can't be doing that. That doesn't make any sense. Let's see. Oh, push. Well, let's see, push. Push is easy, so the sun could push it away, but it's moving towards, so uh, push has to come from the other side. Ah, so the sun could absorb something that was going, oh, yes, so I can figure out how push could happen in a very elemental, simple way. Push just made more sense. And I was also thinking in terms of photons. I said, what if gravity is like a photon? Photons are force. They impose momentum. Things move when you hit them with photons. So what if gravity was a bunch of photons pushing? So, yes, of course somebody could think of it. It's a 350-year-old idea. I mean, it really doesn't take a bunch of sophisticated nuclear power plant references and all kinds of fancy experiment references. You don't need a whole bunch of references to understand the difference between push and pull. I mean, holy shit. I mean, these accusations are just so fucking retarded. Especially when the rest of your nonsense betrays a below fifth grade understanding of math. Well, why don't we? Why don't we show that? Why don't you, uh, like again, have the balls to have a real interaction with me, and we can see who the fuck understands anything about the physical world? I can ask you a simple question: Do you believe in a god? I mean, how how stupid are you? How the fuck stupid is some idiot who says these retarded, idiotic things? And what are you defending? You're defending spooky action based on silly polarizing experiments where they've completely exaggerated how good the evidence is. I mean, your physics is so bad and so badly evidenced. All right, anyway. Um, and again, where's my logical error? So again, where's the logical error in recognizing that, well, if I come up with this push theory and, you know, it does everything and it's... A, and actually, the physicists already acknowledge that the push argument works really well. I mean, it explains gravity perfectly, and it just has a couple of issues, you know, drag uh, being a major one. But when you understand that electrons and protons do experience drag, well, you know, now that drag argument doesn't so bad anymore. So we, obviously, velocity is more complex than elemental. Because the elemental bits can't do the perpetual velocity thing. Matter bits can't do perpetual velocity. They can't do it. So, yeah, drag really does happen. But somehow, the more complex things overcome the problem. All right, anyway, so Superior Mind responded to this. So before I annihilate it, I'll read his comment just for the sake of being courteous. That's like accusing someone of not being able to think of the wheel. I mean, it really is this simple. <laughs> yes. Uh, push makes more sense. Well, regardless of whether it even makes more sense, I mean, there's only two choices, push or pull. I mean, you know, 50-50 chance kind of thing. It's a direct causal occurrence. Uh, push requires more complex, pull requires more complex me mechanisms in that regard. And clearly, and even with more complex mechanisms, the physics seems impossible because there's an energy problem. It takes too much energy to pull something. It takes more energy to make the pull device than, and, and to exercise the pull device. The, the, uh, the process of doing your pulling would consume more energy. So that's why when you really think about it, all of the pulls can be understood as pushes, like opening the doorknob, you're pushing on the back of the doorknob. Every single pull you can think of involves pushes. And so it's the pushes that are conservative, and pull is a completely non-conservative explanation. It should be reasonably obvious that force light is traveling in all directions and that it would be absorbed by neighboring bodies causing them to accelerate towards each other. It's really just obvious. Yes, it's obvious that mock gravity is a fantastic explanation for gravity. I mean, it's just so good. It explains why they're turning to circles. It explains the inverse square law. 
it explains it so well and again they threw it in the trash can without even giving it a chance I mean Richard Feynman compares it to stupid he compares electrons and photons to raindrops as an analogy and says there therefore it can't work even when he knew in all likelihood knew that oh these very things I'm talking about electrons and protons oh they don't move perpetually in space they don't gain permanent speed especially when the rest of your nonsense I mean that's what the, the that's what the, the all of those I mean he was a nuclear physicist so he did lot, he saw lots of cloud chamber images right I mean lots and lots of them and what do cloud chambers demonstrate with all those little you know when the little thing swirls what is that uh, demonstrating that's demonstrating the loss of velocity that's showing you an electron or a proton or whatever a f f f pussy weirdo ton um, so, you know that's showing them losing velocity that's what happens to them when they lose velocity so I mean it was right in his own face and he and because you you people are such borgies you know you can't step one minute out of your little fucking why don't you buy your dollar store t-shirt box especially when the rest of your nonsense betrays below a fifth grade okay quote from the video yes please yes a, a quote of what I've said that is um, below a fifth grade quote again in fifth grade I was already saying what do you mean photons are doing this and this? How are they doing all that crap? How are they how are they doing all of this jerky jerky crap? What mechanism forces them to herky jerky their way across the universe? And there was no answer. Provide one example that violates fourth grade math. Yes, please. One example that violates fourth grade physics, as if, and one example that violates fourth grade logic. Yes, anything would do. Any real argument where you actually hold me accountable to some huge giant mistake. And I've made mistakes in past videos. I've I made arguments trying to defend that gravity is um, happening. You know, the gravity you're falling into is actually the gravity you're causing through interaction through direct you know and I really didn't get that no the gravity is already there because the previous mass the mass you're heading for is still moving okay even though the Sun looks like the mass in the Sun isn't going anywhere no it's all going somewhere this stuff's going this way and this stuff's going this way and the neat thing is is the stuff going this way can't feel pressure coming from the other direction it can't it can't sense <clears throat> like the the it, it, it it's it's vulnerable to bullets coming from behind and hitting it but it's not vulnerable to the bullets it's shooting they can't hit him you know you know that kind of thing so it can only feel one kind of force in one direction one force change it can't feel change of something that's already passed it so if a car passes me at 90 miles an hour um, that's not it. I don't know if that's a great example. And crashes. <clears throat> I mean, I could crash into the crash, so that that you know isn't a great analogy. Um, but yeah, it's not going to affect me. I mean, it's already past me, so the energy is never going to encounter me because it's going away from me. Energy that's coming towards me has to be affected for me to be affected. So, I mean, if your package gets lost in the mail. Who cares? It's my packages that matter. The ones that are heading for me. The forces heading for me have to be interfered with in some way for me to be affected. And a force that's already gone past me, that is, it was heading for me, went right past me. Well, whatever happens to that, the fact that that force gets interrupted can't have anything to do with me. So if it hits me and doesn't get somewhere, I, I'm not affected by that. Somebody else is. Okay, it's that simple. If the stuff that I'm absorbing can't possibly affect me, okay, because it's not getting somewhere, because, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not the one that can be disturbed by that. <clears throat> All right. So, this, you know, whatever. I don't even, I mean, could somebody explain what 
woat means? I mean, what is this? Why does it say this? Why does this troll, the cowboy, what is he using this for? I mean, it's such a stupid fucking... I don't know, what's a secret message or something? It's some Cracker Jack thing? I mean, Cracker Jack toys always had woat written on them or something? What the fuck does that mean? Ugh. Fucking weird ass fucking people on this planet. Alright, so we have a couple of choices here. Um, the, the particle guru, as he calls himself, well, as he was called by his son, and he accepted the title because he thinks that's what marketing requires. You have to exaggerate what you are. Uh, make a whole bunch of exaggerations. Um, pretend that you have the only particle model, blah, 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 blah. The particle model. No, sorry. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so he's talking about the photoelectric effect, and this one gets a little bit messy, okay, because there's two consequences, two, two of two, two things that happen, and they're so easy to confuse. So when you say photoelectric effect, are, uh, are, <clears throat> and then you understand that there's a thing called like photoelectricity, you know, where a photo cell um, has an electrical potential over the material itself that's being irritated by photons. And then there's the effect where the reason why there's a current in the wire is because electrons were displaced temporarily. They shot up and they usually land back down on the material. So to understand this, you understand photons come in, they hit up metal. Electrons pop off the surface and then go back down. Now the only way they could really test this is they create a trap which means if the electron goes off the surface a certain height, it'll go, they'll change the polarity and shoot the electron to a detector. And so the electron won't go back onto the material again. And so they're just really measuring how far the electrons, how high they shoot off the material, it basically tells you how much intensity they have. So the trick is, is they basically shoot off the material the same height but the more light you shine, the more electrons you shoot off that height, and that means you change the electrical potential of the, of the substance. So, I don't really know if I need to do drawings here, but let's, 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 I mean, it is a, it's, it gets complicated by the fact that they begin with this broken language um, and understanding. Um, you know, now we have two things, the photoelectric effect, and a photo cell, okay, isn't measuring electrons moving off the surface, it's measuring the consequence of that. So what I'm trying to say is, is that here's the surface of the metal. And they'll actually say things like that somehow it's the internal electrons that are doing something. And that that's just like Wikipedia says that, I think. And that's just stupid. I mean, it's clearly is a surface effect. So what happens is here's your substance, okay, that has these electrons in it. And you can make a detector to detect what happens out here in the atmosphere, you know, and then you're going to shoot light, okay, on the surface. All right, and the and the effect is is that low frequency light can't get these electrons high enough off the surface, so they just jiggle a little bit. So they will create a tiny bit of electrical potential across this material, but they won't be able to create any effect of shooting the electron far enough off the surface to get caught in a trap and be counted as an electron that bounced off the surface. So they barely jiggle anything. And the real test is, is that when you shine ultraviolet light or a, a higher frequency light, you get lots of electrons that fly right off the surface. Now, as I understand it, they will drift back down to the surface. So it's not like they just fly into space. So, so unless you create some other charge for them to be attracted to in the environment, so unless you put something else in their environment where they would be attracted to that new surface, they'll just land back on the surface again. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, regardless. Um, so the, the thing that's happening really is, is that when the electrons get popped off the surface, they're, not, you know, they're no longer part of the conductor. And so the pressure between all these other electrons, that is how much vibration is happening between them. There's a certain amount of force. Now the force isn't reflecting through as many things 
because you took one of the things out that was causing reflections or, or tightness. And so now there's fewer reflections, which means the voltage went down. So it creates this negative pressure. Um, and <clears throat> so now the ground is at a higher pressure than the metal surface. And the metal, so that's an electrical potential, and that creates an electrical circuit. And again, that voltage can be varied um, that's produced uh, by creating more intensity. But you can't vary how high the electrons actually fly. Um, uh, let me think, um, what's the right way to say that? Not, uh, and so that was the quanta part is that it's a certain quanta of energy uh, that's being absorbed. And so you can't change the velocity of the electrons that are thrown off the surface. So even if I increase the frequency further, I'll just get more okay, electrons flying off the surface. They won't fly off the surface further. All right, but the velocity of the voltage of the surface can be varied, and so that gets into millivolts and you know it can go higher and higher and higher based on the frequency of the light. So anyway, so I'm just saying it's it's a it's kind of a it's got subtle complexity in the sense that they're talking about two different subjects. What happens to the electrical potential across the conductor that you're shining the light on because it's always a metal um, and uh, what are the electrons doing? So what the pressure is doing the voltage and what the electrons are doing are two different things and they talk about it as if it's the same thing and they use velocity of electrons they put it in the terms of millivolts I mean in electron volts um, which just mess, makes the whole thing more complicated because the velocity of an electron isn't the same as the voltage in a wire right. that's probably enough said about that um, but the whole still, we're still stuck with this misunderstanding of what a photon is, <coughs> um, in the sense that what they're saying is a photon is a quanta, is quantized, uh, it comes in clumps, but again, the clump is sort of defined by um, the material, and we're really just talking about a photon is really a ray segment, an amount of ray of something. So if the ray only has two bits to it, <coughs> it's not going to be seen as a photon. That's it. It's gravity, essentially. It can't be seen. It, it won't cause the effect. And so it has to have to have a certain minimum. And clearly, probably, the rule is is that any extra, like if I send seven, well, it's just going to count the three. That's the quanta it's after. And any extra stuff is just going to be discounted as, okay, say, say it was five, because if it was seven, then you'd have two quantas worth. But anyway, <laughs> the point is, it needs to be a certain amount, and any amount under that just can't be measured as the same effect. It has to be measured as something else, which I would argue would be something like gravity. And we obviously can't detect millivolts of gravity. We can't detect tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of gravity. Uh, and this has to do with the fact that you're not detecting the same thing. The photon is creating a frequency which is doing a tipping point argument. It's creating a bigger effect, an amplified effect. So a small amount of force goes in, like you poke your finger on something at just the right interval, and it finally tips over. Where, if you wanted to tip it over, or immediately it would take more energy, and you're just taking advantage of the rocking motion, which was requiring you to use <clears throat> um, less, it's like a pulley. It's, it's allowing you to do the pushing over a longer period of time to knock it over, so you have to use less energy in intervals. But if you wanted to knock it over all at once, you can't make a photon big enough, a single quanta <clears throat> of electromagnetic radiation doesn't have enough energy to knock it over all at once. So it needs more than one of them. And there's no way to, to hit them with a bunch of them all at once. Because they're photons and electrons. And, you, you know, the odds are you can't hit the same electron with more than one photon at the same time. From the same source. Because the light diverges. 
Okay. I see that this, there's a, a ton of detail in the universe. So, so I think I'll go to, uh, you know, just to, to, to point out, I, I mean, I, I, the argument to be made is that the mechanics is simple for all these processes, but there's a lot of processes. So like a Rube Goldberg machine, like you could have one that has a hundred different little steps. You know, the, the egg falls into the frying pan, the fire turns on, it burns the egg, the fire from the egg you know, burns a string, the string allows a spring to collapse, blah, 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 blah. All of the little processes are simple, but trying to describe it as a whole gets kind of complicated. Um, because unlike Rube Goldberg, all of these elements have relationship to each other, and like the common speed of the force, uh, you know, they all have a unity uh, to one idea that's one universe with one mechanics. One set of rules applies to all of the the. It's like rain is gravity you know when I'm hydroelectric isn't hydroelectric you're not taking the energy from water you're taking the energy created by thermodynamics which uh, move the water up and you're just taking the energy going down so you're using gravity but when you're the force you're really using is the thermal force that lifted the air in the first place against gravity so, I mean, tracing the actual force, I'm just saying that part can get a little bit complicated. Tracing the actual first cause, in the sense of the first cause that was this event. All the events are, there's no such thing as a first cause anywhere, you know, except the origins of the universe, you could argue, but I don't think you have to even worry about that. Um, but for each one of these events, there's causes to those events, but we isolate them and say, no, this is the event, and it has a first cause from external to that event. Um, I mean, in a sense, our individuality, our you know, individual humans are first causes in the sense that the DNA meets and creates it, but clearly there's an event that happens that causes it, causes the new thing to exist. But to really understand the system, you have to understand the events that also cause the creation of the new person. Because that's all part of what that new person's going to be eventually. All right, so that's more you know, words than I would like to have to speak. But um, So the point is, is that if you take the time to be careful about tracing these causes, um, they're very simple. And you just have to follow simple rules to trace it all back. All right. So um, another video that wasn't uh, bad. Uh, I think this is the idiots. Yeah, the same argument on gravity they opened the other day. Um, uh, so this um, Kathy's shocking science history videos. Be interesting if I can maybe maybe I'll email or something try to see if I can get her to have a conversation. She seems to know some physics. Uh, but these are really good history videos in the sense that they have, um, you know, she's done a lot of, this This is research that should be applauded in the sense that she's gone to the trouble to, you know, find out what the real truth is. And it, it seems well documented in terms of what she's arguing has been verified from more than one source and all that kind of stuff and from actual uh, letters and different things. And so that's all very good to get a more accurate understanding of who the players were and what was actually said and what they actually thought rather than the lies you get <laughs> you know from conventional physics that say something like well Einstein thought when no the evidence points that he didn't think that so anyway so it's another good video um, uh, yeah really, really uh, how the third law of thermodynamics made Einstein famous I don't know if that was really the title because it really I wouldn't say that's what did it. We already know what made him famous, um, you know, substantially, and that was the, the silly Eddington experiment um, sealed the deal for him anyway.
Uh, but anyway, uh, so that's worth something. So I'll mention it just because it's something happening that's better than this nothing that most people are spewing. Uh, but it's not really a conversation about the core credibility of these ideas. You know, how they were developed and who developed them is important and worth knowing accurately. But the more important argument is, is did they really have evidence to draw a conclusion? That's the real, you know, that's the gnarly part that has to be gotten to. Because clearly I'm arguing that the evidence for all of these fundamental elemental laws they're writing is crap. They have written. Let's put it that way. Uh, let's just see if there's anything new. Uh, yeah, physics girl has left the reasonable video building. I mean, there hasn't been anything she's done worth watching forever. Uh, but anyway, I, I mean, uh, how we find aliens in our solar system. I mean, just forget it. Silly bullshit. Um, this whole idea that they think they're going to find, uh, you know, something that we can't even duplicate with all of our science, abiogenesis. No, you're not going to find anything alive anywhere. Uh, anyway, and you're certainly not going to find anything intelligent because that road of evolution has so many one-time events in it that it's got to be preposterously uh, unlikely. I mean, just insanely unlikely. Uh, I mean, only one kind of thinking mechanism, neurons. No other organism has any other way of doing thinking. <laughs> you know, that's it. Neuron. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, I better not be the fucking groundhog. Alright, time out. There's always something here on Earth. It's probably just a bird. Alright, I'm back. Um, <laughs> yeah, no groundhog, and I got a, some, some old guy. Cliff! Cliff! Are you there? Cliff! Sorry, no, no, no Cliff. Anyway, um... So what was I going to point out here? Uh, I was going to see if there was any other new videos, but there weren't, right? Yes, I think that's correct. Uh, no videos, okay. Uh, worth watching. All right, so now we'll just move on to... Uh, yes, writing stuff. Um, so thinking again of how to take you step by step. Take any person. See, I, again... I'd like to have the conversation. I'd like to be arguing with somebody who has some literacy in physics. So somebody who does know the difference between double slit and single slit and multi-slit experiment, does know that the electron experiments, you know, where they spin them uh, in uh, a magnetic field, you know, an even proportional magnetic field, that the electrons don't keep moving, which is sort of an indication that where does their velocity go, um, that experiments where they make the electron deflect up and down rather than away or towards our experiments again where they've put a gas into the vessel that the electrons are traveling through and that the unfortunately the atoms are the ones doing the reacting so you're seeing the electrons take the path that the atoms are taking uh, because you're changing the way the conductor works essentially you're changing the conducting gas in the vessel I don't know what that is, but we'll ignore it. Um, so, um, you know, so somebody who has knowledge of these experiments, somebody who's, you know, Stern Gerlach knows that, no, there's no evidence they did this experiment with single electrons. It's an experiment done with atoms, and that you can't make, um, you can't say that electrons are dipoles, okay, based on the fact that you're doing an experiment with atoms, and atoms are dipoles. Yes, atoms have protons and electrons. Electrons don't have protons and electrons. Electrons and protons, you know, electrons, you can't do the spin of an electron, you know, based on watching what an atom does. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, it really does seem like there's something out there, but nothing's showing up, so. I should just turn the sensor off or fix it. I guess it's seeing movement in something else. I don't Anyway, sorry, distracting me. Um, 
so that would be nice uh, you know and then the other argument is okay there's a mass audience of human beings who still think real physics has all this credibility because they know you know they spent years in college and they did all these ca complex calculations and therefore they know what cause and effect how cause and effect works when I can argue that overtly some of the stuff they're saying is so stupid and so you know some of them are obviously this push and pull um, you know um, so if I come to you and I say you know again I think if Newton would have said I think space is really some kind of structure and that it bends you know it warps <laughs> you know like a tablecloth you know you put a weight on it and it's, it can sink down and stuff falls into the sinking I think if he said that everybody would have said you can't say that Newton that's that's as wacky as your angel theories forget it you can't publish that that's crazy talk so the very idea that we've you know we people have accepted a theory that makes no mechanical sense whatsoever I mean, in two dimensions, it's basically just saying gravity makes gravity. And in three dimensions, it's saying that every single atomic piece of energy is a little vacuum cleaner, you know, sucking space. And that somehow everything in the space can feel the flow of the space and it pushes it towards something. I mean, it's a silly explanation. <laughs> So I'm arguing that, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't even have to even barely make an argument that's rational because what they're saying is so irrational. And then simple things like, yes, yeah, you ask Richard Feynman to do a simple thing. Why do magnets attract and repel? And he tells you stories about old ladies falling down on the ice and how I can't explain it to you because you're too stupid. And then his end conclusion is, well, we have something called a virtual photon, which is you know something we made up because we don't know how it works either. I mean, it's so bad, so glaringly bad, that I shouldn't even have to make these arguments, right? I mean, I should just be able to be, uh, you know, anything should be better. You should accept, uh, you know, this this crayon, uh, you know, made the universe. That almost sounds more rational. Their theory is so bad. Okay. So... Um, so yes, yeah, so the, one of the outstanding things is the idea that you know the realization through Maxwell's equations, essentially, ironically, the very equations that turned light into something wacky and special, but in a sense recognized that this thing called a photon or light is the same as this other stuff, magnetism. You know that it has a there's this huge connection in terms of it. All this stuff is moving the same speed. All this stuff that imparts momentum and travels really 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 fast all the stuff going really 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 fast is all going really fast the same speed limit <laughs> and you can't vary the speed much I mean you can make light go through a denser material and you know slow it down but you there's I don't think there's any examples of magnetism being slowed down um, through any material um, so you know it just doesn't make any sense uh, that that there's such a an opposition to giving them better explanations when clearly they should the physics should already be saying it's the speed of force they should already be saying that it should be called the speed of force not the speed of light because all the forces move this speed all right then the push pull argument is just so simple you know um, I can give you a push explanation for the universe. I can explain to you how the universe really is just stuff hitting other stuff. All right, And when it hits something, that means it doesn't go where it's going. And if it doesn't get where it's going, that means it changed over here. Over here changes. If something doesn't come to your door, if somebody doesn't come to your door, knock on it and say, can I have a cup of sugar? Your life could be radically different because you don't go to the door, right? Because you don't go to the door, answer the door, have a stupid conversation with a stupid neighbor, you would have done something else. You know, and you might have done something like buy a lottery ticket and win a million dollars or whatever. You would know, something it's a change, and any change can be a huge change. Okay. So, you know, this is really just about stuff changing what happens to other stuff by changing something, by getting in the way 
by just being here, by hitting these photons that are hitting me. They're not hitting something else. That means that something else is colder. Yes, I'm hotter. That's a change. But that stuff's colder. So I've changed it. All right, so that's the real consequence is that the change doesn't just happen to one thing. There's no such thing as one change you make to the universe. I can't just change one pixel and not change all the pixels in a sense. Change their potential. Change can. Let's just put it that way. Um, that, it, that it it can have effects that can be visible. It has effects that are permanent and real. It does in fact change everything that's um, within a certain amount of time connected to a thing. And you could say that eventually it affects everything <laughs> because everything um, in the end any disproportions will affect something else. I don't even know how to say that, but um, eventually everything will encounter the effect of the change that something made. So, so you know, logically, you can just sort of understand it, that if I just had the universe the way it is and I just made one more human being and I put him on Earth, you can understand how the change that that one creation would make just could spiral over time out in the sense that he's going to marry somebody who was somebody else's wife, would have been. And that means somebody else isn't going to marry this other person. That means somebody else isn't going to marry this person. Somebody else isn't going to marry this person. It's going to change everything. Uh, see, everything is just the wrong way to say it, because it obviously takes time for the change to have an effect. So it can't change something over there that's too far away where the change is going to take a long time to get there. And some things, there's lines of equilibrium where if you, even if you make a change in the temperature, it can't get out because of the insulation. So the insulation nullifies any change that takes place. So there can be barriers to the change, walls that the change can't get across. The, this is the kind of conversation that physics should be having about this elemental, fundamental functions. All right, explain motion and excretion. So that's really what the physics is, right? You're just trying to explain why did that thing move or why is it radiating what it's radiating? Why is that crap coming off of it? And I would argue that a big part of the crap coming off of us, we're reflecting radio waves and, you know, cell phone radiation microwaves, all kind of stuff is bouncing off of us and going through us. And gravity's just one more of those things. Um, and so all we're really talking about is what's, what do I'm doing? Am I moving? And what am I reflecting? You know, what's bouncing off of me or going through me? And that's physics. Is explaining the dynamic, the consequences of my movement, my lack of movement. These are all things that are happening in the universe and they have a consequence. All right. And really, the secondary point to that is the small universe is the only universe. The only reason why my hand moves is because trillions and zillions and gazillions of events have to take place in the small universe that are really causing it. The only universe is the small universe. The little bits are making every single fucking thing that's happening happen. So you have to think of all the... There, there's no analogy to our big universe because we don't see it do anything but the simplest of things. There's no patterns in there, any bigger patterns. Um, but the little universe is full of those patterns, full of electricity going between electrons and all kinds of stuff happening. And they're happening so fast, the speed of light. So the speed of light at the tiny distances between atoms and tiny distances between electrons equals... Oh, God damn it. What the hell is it picking up? All right. All right, should be back again. <laughs> so anyway, I have a motion sensor to detect when the groundhog and it usually just picks up birds and stuff, other stuff moving and ca feral cats going by, which is so depressing. But anyway, all right. Um, so yes, yeah, so the only universe is the small universe. Uh, nothing I do will not happen unless a bunch of tiny, tiny bits are flowing through different pathways and through different organizations of these atomic structures and all this stuff that has to happen for anything that I do to happen. 
and it's happening through again z zillions of little events that take place because of the th insane speed at which this stuff is moving I mean we really just can't imagine the speed I mean 300,000 meters per second I mean just uh, right 3 million meters per second um, insane speed <sighs> I, I mean, and it's so so insane that I I've lost perspective in the sense that I'm saying, well, it's 360 miles, 360,000 miles a second, no. miles an hour. No. See, I mean, just to even lose, and so that you just lose all perspective because it's such a it's so fucking fast. That you can't even put your finger on it. I think it's a three million meters per second is the right one. Okay. Um, but the 300,000 number is just stuck in my head. Maybe that's 300,000 meters. Uh, see, I'm trying miles per hour versus meters per second or miles per second. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's not an important detail. It's just insanely fast, and that's the real universe, and that's the only universe there is. The big universe is just an emergent property of what happens at the fundamental level. The big universe doesn't control the little universe. The little universe controls the big universe, and it's just such a simple and but really important fundamental idea. If you don't understand that, if you don't agree with that, then we have nothing to talk about because you just you don't get cause and effect. You don't understand that the effects are have zillions of little bits to their cause. All right, this stuff only has mass in a direction it is moving. So, mass just has to do with the fact that in this this thing right here, it has a hard surface and a mass because there's energy moving in every direction from it. It's solid because the pressure is coming from all directions. Um, that is, has a component of energy in it moving in every single direction. And if I throw it and move it in some other direction, it means it exchanged energy. It got rid of stuff going some other way, and it took more stuff going this way. So it has an imbalance inside of it. So it has more mass in the direction it's moving, and it'll hit me with a weight that's greater than its weight from, say, gravity or its weight in it from some other force that changes okay its balance gravity changes your balance it gives you stuff going this way and it takes away stuff going other ways um, exchanges and <clears throat> so that's the thing to really understand about mass so the more velocity I give you the more of your mass is just in one direction so you get heavier okay in that direction so if I throw me to the ground <laughs> I'll weigh more so if I jump up in the air and let gravity push me down I'll I can land on a scale and I'll weigh 800 pounds so I jump off a, a meter high table onto a scale I'll weigh 800 pounds now I really didn't gain weight but I have very little weight in all these other directions now now especially in the direction opposite to the direction I'm moving I don't weigh much at all. I'll lose weight. <laughs> okay, if you could stick a scale on my head and by some mechanism, uh, the scale will say I get lighter as I'm going down. Um, that kind of thing. So mass is directional. It just has to do with what kind of energy you have inside of you, and that's all you're measuring as mass. Is what's the what's the the prejudice of your bits? Um, and that's the only way we can measure it, so to speak. Uh, okay. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so, so it's a component in a direction. Um, momentum in a direction. And that's what electrons are capturing in terms of rowers. Uh, and if they have a rower going in all directions, then they don't go anywhere. But any imbalance means they go in the direction of the imbalance. All right. So this one is another one everybody should be able to agree with. I mean, I think Ken Wheeler would agree with this statement, uh, or something like it. Uh, so some small variant in it, maybe. But force equals pressure 
equals balance imbalance. So it's the pressure itself isn't force per se. Um, well, it sort of obviously is. <laughs> you know, to make the pressure, there has to be something hitting. Um, but the thing that makes the pressure relevant is the fact that you can have higher pressure and lower pressure. You can increase the pressure or decrease the pressure, and that's what makes everything move. So everything is medi pressure mediation. Now, I know he said he said those words, pressure mediation. Everything's just pressure mediation. That is, I block a force that was going to hit you. You have less pressure hitting you, less reflections in that direction. And a reflection means an exchange. So now you lose momentum in that, that direction. You lose mass in a direction because I'm depriving you of the thing that would have given you mass in the direction. I've deprived you of the momentum you would have had if I didn't absorb the energy and move much, 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 much slower than the speed of light. So again, it's this difference. Understanding the mass and matter stuff is moving really insanely slow by comparison to the insanely fast speed of the forces. The forces are moving insanely fast. That means you can sort of understand that the matter is moving insanely slow. Okay. Just changing when or if a force bit gets where it was going. Uh, changing when changes what. So meaning changing when something happens changes what happens. Um, and clearly if you change if it happens, okay, the when or if. So if I stop something from happening that would have happened to you, clearly there's two events. Me stopping and you being affected by the stop. Your, your world changes. Okay, um, so I've sort of said that enough. Uh, I think no instantaneous spontaneous or true random and this is just something we all should agree on these are just words they're a little bit sloppy and messy and if you believe in cause and effect they don't really mean anything so there's a process a cause and effect there's no such thing as a chain of cause and effect that can be instantaneous the events the chain links cannot take place at the same time <laughs> the there's a process to the production of the chain that links have to be closed, 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 closed. Um, so there's a ticking of the clock in terms of uh, that's the fact. And nothing, nothing's happening all at the same time and all of that crap. And so clearly spontaneous is basically saying cause and effect is wrong. So there's no point in talking about that word as being irrational and useless. So these are archaic words that has to do with a time when people really hadn't gotten a grok, haven't grabbed the concept of cause and effect, and we're still playing with ideas of free this and free that and nonsensical terms that just can't have any meaning. Um, and again, the true random part just breaks down in a cause and effect universe that just really can't be anything called a random, a true random. Uh, cause and effect, and, and all we're trying to do here, so so if you don't concede it's cause and effect, then get out of the conversation, right? Don't point in me calling you an idiot and you calling me an idiot, unless you're going to say I'm an idiot because I believe in cause and effect. But there's, you know, there's just really no point in having a conversation because it's fundamental to understanding that what we're really trying to describe are what are the fundamental rules, what are the checkers, what is the board, and what are the rules of play. And that's all this is about. And if you're trying to do something else, then there's just no point. And if you're trying to do it in a context where you think there's a God is the board or something, forget it. We're, we're not going to be able to have any conversation. Because I, I, it's just a complete violation of logic. The chains of logic, the boundaries, the way you do logic, which is combining facts, the God fact does not mix with any of this. It doesn't make any sense. It's completely um, useless in terms of it just breaks every single perception of connecting these dots if you keep trying to make it into the image of Jesus. It just won't work. It, it breaks all the logic that you're applying, the deduction to solving the crime. If you believe in invisible men, there's no point in coming into the courtroom and talking about the evidence. 
because yes of course you can contrive a story where the invisible man took your finger when you were sleeping and pushed it you know on the doorknob the invisible man <laughs> stole your dna from your bathroom and put it on the woman's forehead and the murder victim you can just come up with any kind of horse shit to um, uh, to turn all the evidence into garbage uh, because the invisible man tainted it the invisible man did this and the invisible man did that so it just breaks any kind of fair game all right uh, matter moves as forced I mean this is a statement again that somebody else like at a Benjamin Franklin should have come up with <laughs> you know so, so they should have figured this out a long time ago that that's all that's happening here. It's kind of a Newton kind of statement. It's one of the more, the, the statements that should be in no, Newton's book is is that yes, matter moves as force. Okay, it doesn't move without the force. The force has to push it somewhere. The force has to keep poking it, or it's not going anywhere. All right, uh, matter traps and diverts force. So this one's a little bit more uh, of a complex abstraction but I mean again it's another idea where you say Newton should have been able to figure this one out that you could take stuff like light and you could bend it off of a, a, a mirror and then you could bend it off another mirror and 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 you could bend it off another and that it should be trappable and that this concept of trap what's the consequence of a trap well a force didn't get where it was going if it doesn't get where it's going it's going to change the place where it was going uh, that place is different than if the force did go there um, and that that the idea that the force is what causes the interaction well I've just denied it the interaction and if I take that trap and then I turn it and open the door and now the energy goes this way well now I've put more energy in some other place some place that wasn't going to get hit by anything is now getting hit by something um, and that's all that really this whole universe is run on and all of this again you got to go back to these the simple concepts get the push pull and this thing understood get, get the fact that um and once you understand that you understand that yeah you always have to look for the the hit what's hitting what and the hitting means it absorbed it it stopped it from going where it was going what's the consequence of it not going where it's going well there's an imbalance there then i mean this is just too just fits so well this is your unification uh, the, the forces are obviously unified on their face by having the same speed and in a sense having the same way that they convey momentum um, and there's just no point in all this argument because when you take it back to the basics you can understand that saying something like bent space as an explanation is junk it's garbage is shit saying something like virtual photon to explain why a magnet flips is junk it's garbage it's a, an empty vacuous silly nothing of an explanation it's it's embarrassingly incomplete as a statement it's not even incomplete because it's it's incomplete and silly uh, preposterous um, you can't do that you can't say placeholder I don't have an answer. Here's the placeholder for an answer, virtual answer. And yes, I, I don't even explain how the virtual thing actually does the two processes of attraction and repulsion. I'm just saying attraction and repulsion thing. So physics walks up to you, ask it, how's a magnet work? Well, it creates a repulsion and attraction thing. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's an answer? No, that's the exact opposite of an answer. That's just shit. So, and that's what they're doing, and they're doing it, and you're applauding, and you're saying, I have to defend those guys. Those nerds really know what they're doing. And that's the answer they gave you for magnetism. There's an attraction repulsion thing. And you're calling me an asshole and an idiot. And you've bought that as an answer. That was good enough for you. Oh, I'm satisfied. Yeah, cool. There's a thing. There's completely opposite things. By the opposite thing decider. <laughs> yeah, mechanism thing. 
the thing makes the thing thing the thing the thing the thing the way the thing things is the way the thing things I mean you could write a song I mean I, you know how obviously stupid does this conversation have to be I mean I'm having to defend myself because I think that's silly I mean, really, yeah, it almost makes you want to go to war. It really does make you want, oh, come on, I'm just going to shoot you. You're going to call me an asshole because I didn't buy that? I don't say that's great food? Oh, my brain totally gets what you're saying? Because my brain says, fuck you, that's not an answer. All right. So, more, there's more stuff, but... So this is just the real universe is made of very small bits moving very fast. <laughs> you know, that's the real universe. A billion billion interactions per second. Just just an insane amount of stuff happening uh, every little second that passes by. We are so fucking slow. We are so disconnected from the real universe um, in terms of the fact that we are so behind. We can't in any we can't see all, all of it. We we're not seeing. We're seeing so little of it. Uh, little tiny glimpses of the frame rate. The real frame rate is billions and billions of frames per second, and we're seeing 16. Yeah. So anyway, till the next time, and such, and so forth and whatnot. I mean, I can only, <laughs> I can only make an honest argument. And all these cowards, you know, just will say. Oh, you're unqualified. Uh, you know, oh, oh, you're too snarky. You don't allow me to call you an idiot. Uh, 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 uh you know, yeah, what, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not your punching bag? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm not something you can disc with non evidence. Yes, you can't call me a wife beater until you show up with the evidence. And if you're going to call me an idiot or. Uh, uh, irresponsible in how I've handled the evidence or something else, then quote it and show it. Show the evidence of where I've cheated the truth somewhere. This, you people are just such fucking despicable cowards. You make these accusations and you show up with no fucking evidence. It's, it's despicable. You're despicable. Quoting Daffy Duck. <laughs>